So a very real concern that people have when they think about homeschooling is, is my child gonna be prepared for the real world? And that's the topic we're discussing on today's episode. Hi everyone, I'm Pam Barnhill. Welcome to 10 Minutes to a Better Homeschool. This is episode 35. I have helped thousands of homeschoolers create doable systems, beat burnout, and bring more joy to their day. Okay, so will your child be ready for the real world if they are homeschooled? And uh, it's a question that we get a lot. It's a question some days I still worry about myself. So it's not like all of a sudden the fears completely go away. And I think that's true with any parent anywhere. So when you think about it, there are probably a lot of times that parents of kids in public school worry is my child gonna be able to make it in the real world? This is not really a symptom of homeschooling or not homeschooling, right? We have some children who are very competent, uh, able to take care of themselves in almost all situations, and then we have some kids and we're like, hey, yeah, they're gonna be living with me when they're 30. <laughs> so it's completely and totally a parenting thing. But I think sometimes people get in their heads that because homeschooling happens at home, that somehow kids aren't going to be prepared for the real world. So I wanted to talk about like three different things today. And first of all, realize I'm largely making generalizations here. Now, I tried not to do it too badly. Um, and I also tried not to, I'm not really going to focus a lot on academics today because there are a lot of kids out there who go to school and don't go to school who really aren't all that academically inclined. And quite frankly, academics and being academically inclined really makes no difference as to whether or not you make it in the real world. I have a number of family members who eh, just weren't all that academically inclined and they've actually done very well for themselves and been very happy in their chosen careers and have done well with their life. So yeah, you know, sometimes that academic stuff can be just a little bit overrated. So let's talk about three ways that your homeschooled kid is going to be perfectly okay and why. And the first way is, you know what? Homeschooling happens a lot in the real world. Now, I think a lot of times people kind of have the expectation that homeschoolers are locking themselves in their house and never going anywhere. We only kind of did that in the spring of 2020, but for the most part, yeah, we're out and about and we're doing lots of things. And I don't know where the idea came from that public school is the real world. It's actually a very artificially structured system. And so our homeschooled kids get a lot of opportunities to interact with all different kinds of people people who are not their age, people who are younger than them, people who are older than them, and really live a life that is very much like what they're going to come across in the real world. Um, because when you're in the real world, they don't just stick you in a cubicle next to cubicles of everybody who's your exact same age. You end up having to deal with people who are a lot older than you of different generations. And then once you're older, people who are a lot younger than you of different generations. And so it's really good as a homeschooler, you get that wide variety of interactions in your day. And uh, yeah, so as long as you're not staying at home and cloistering yourself away, you can get out and meet lots of different people. One thing I will touch on though is as the homeschooling parent, I feel like it's my responsibility to get my kids in touch with um, people of different ethnic backgrounds, people of different races and things like that. And so I have tried to, fortunately, I've been really lucky and our church uh, is very multicultural. And so we've always had that particular outlet. But if we didn't have that, if we had a, a church that was all very vanilla, um, then we would probably have to seek out experiences in other ways. And so that's just something to keep in mind that you might want to think about. So the second way that I think homeschoolers are really prepared for the real world is that homeschoolers, for a large part, are kind of very autodidactic. And what I mean by this is when you go to a classroom and you sit in a the classroom, there's a lot of lecture and you're being given a lot of information. And, and there is some of that in homeschooling, but many times parents are mentoring their kids and kind of coaching their kids as the children find a lot of the information 
for themselves. And so, you know, my kids read a lot of books. They watch a lot of videos. We do a more literature-based style of homeschooling. When, when I say literature-based, I don't mean like non-true books, like fiction books. But there are a lot of non-fiction books that we use in order to gather information. So it's not just here's one single textbook or a single lecture and I'm just going to give you all of the information. We go searching for it. We go seeking it out. This is something that I'm modeling for them constantly and this is something that they're doing on their own. I can't tell you how many times my kids have like told me things and I'm like where in the world did you learn that and it's been from somewhere other than me and so they do a lot of that and I think that's one of the gifts of homeschooling and that's one of the things that homeschoolers end up being really good at is I want to know something where can I find it let me go get it you know uh, where is where is this information and how can I collect it to me so that's the second way and then finally the third way is that homeschoolers are always following their interests. They have a lot of extra time to do that because school doesn't take them seven and a half hours a day. Even a lot of high schoolers are only doing school for, you know, about five hours a day. So there's a lot of efficiency in homeschooling and that gives them a lot of time to really dig in and follow their own interest. And so they do that. My kids also actually get to pick a lot of the things that they learn because I am creative with my transcripts, I can say to them, what science do you want to do next year? What history do you want to do next year? And really let us dive deeper into some of the topics that they find really fascinating and really interesting. And so what I think this does for homeschoolers is it makes them really interested in the world around them, really interested in the process of learning and finding out more things and engaged in the world. Now, I'm not saying that public school kids are not engaged in the world, but I do want to kind of dispel the myth that homeschoolers are sitting at home not doing a whole lot of things. You know, just within the past few days, my daughter has helped me with uh, buy some new makeup and share with me all of the knowledge that she's learned from YouTube makeup tutorials. She's also flown a glider for the very first time, and she just headed off to camp with a bunch of kids from our church where I know she's going to have a wonderful time and all of this has happened in the past three days and so she is getting lots of opportunities and lots of different opportunities to instruct people to take advantage of things and to enjoy community all while being a homeschool kid so you know what I think she's going to have a pretty good chance at making it in the real world I will be back again next week. And next week, Jen McKinnon's going to be on the podcast again. And she's going to be chatting with me about how to work at home and homeschool when you don't work for yourself, when you actually work for somebody else and have to keep a set schedule. So we have five great strategies to make that easier for you. So we hope you will join us then. Music